I hope you guys are having a great day. My day is going well, okay. Mm, special. We're down. Before my kids come out here to eat lunch soon, I'm going to quickly talk about um, couples and PTSD. I'm gonna, I just want to quickly mention that we normally don't see the other side of abused people's lives. Like, we normally don't see the spouse's point of view. We don't see how the spouse is handling being with an abused person and a battered person. Um, we have to consider that the spouses are going through it too. It's not always cut and dry, you know? It's not always about, okay, I've been abused and that's all there is to it. No, because I've been abused. There are times in the past where I also abused my husband in certain ways. Not physically or sexually, but in other ways. You know, there, there were those times. And we got to start thinking about our spouses as well. We have to think about and consider the fact that they're hurting as well. They're hurting for you because they love and care about you. And our spouses are angry and often they're depressed because they can't do more for you. You know what I mean? They're often struggling in ways that we can't comprehend, just like we're struggling in ways they can't comprehend. When you've been abused for a long time, your soul is struggling to heal. And when you get married, or if you're in a, like, a long-term committed relationship, it's often hard on them to also maintain their relationship with you. Sometimes it's hard for them to manage as well, so they might get depressed dealing with you. They might be, you know, feeling low because they can't provide for you the way they know they should or the way they feel they should. They might be depressed because they see you hurting and that hurts them. They see you hurting, they see you crying, they see you, you know, full of anxiety. They, they see the pain that you've been through, they, they've been through the family lashings and all the, you know, everything that comes along with being a survivor, you know? They've seen every piece of that. So it's, it's very hard on them as well. It's not just about the battered person all the time. It's about the person who's actually there with you every day, struggling and motivating you and trying to get you through your day. You know, just a simple task of trying to get you through your day. They're, they deserve more props than they get. You know, because when you marry an abused person, it's rough. It's very, 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 very rough. And over the years, I've gotten older and wiser, and I've realized just how hard I am on my husband sometimes. Like, just how hard him handling me is. Like, it's just... I'm just being real, you know, I'm not a bad person, but... I have issues that are hard for any person to deal with on a daily basis. So... We just have to consider the spouses that are attached to us or any abused person that you know about. You have to give them more props and we can't continue to batter them and say and always complain like well you don't know what I'm going through or you don't know what said person's going through. But they're living with it every day. They know. They know. And in my opinion they are troopers. Very much so. They are troopers because they're hanging in there and they're trying to repair the person um, wholeheartedly. And it's rough. Oftentimes, a lot of couples, they don't make it. A lot of couples do not make it through these really hard times with PTSD and depression and anxiety. And just constant years and years of repairing. A lot of couples just don't make it. And it's understandable. It's not meant for everybody. It's not... Not everybody can handle it. I'll just say that. Not everybody can handle the tough job that is preparing an abused person because it's tough. It's tough as hell. Sometimes it's tougher on him than it is for me because we have kids involved. And you have kids involved, that's a whole nother different story. It's like, oh my god, I'm, I'm sitting here trying to prepare you and I'm trying to build up these kids. At the same time, you know, I have to work on raising these kids. At the same time, I'm repairing myself. I'm repairing things that were done to me. I'm repairing things that need to be repaired within me in order to be a better mother. 
So all in all, it's rough. It's rough having a family dynamic and you're dealing with all these things. It's just rough. So we need to give um, our spouses more recognition. We need to give them more appreciation, more props, because it's just not easy. Everybody sees um, the abused person and what they're dealing with, but no one really looks at the person behind the scenes. No one really sees the person behind the camera. No one wants to help the person behind the camera because they're like, well, when you married them, that's your, that's your own fault. That's your, that's on you. That's your life. But that's not necessarily fair, you know? I realize how hard it is for my husband to handle me and he's the only one around, technically. He's really the only one around that's helping me. And for years that's been the case. Nobody else has been around to help repair me. And yeah, I'm much better now as far as repairing myself. But it's still not easy, you know? It's just not easy on him all the time to have to worry about me and deal with our kids. So, you know, I'm always telling my husband that I appreciate him and, you know, all these things to, you know, make him feel good about himself and make him feel good about his decision of even being with me. But, you know, there were times in the past where that shit didn't even work. I'm just being honest, it did not work. He was walking around with regret as far as being with me and he was like, you know, why did I take this on? It's too much for me to handle. Blah, blah, blah. But... He's doing a pretty damn good job right about now, and um, I commend him for it, you know? Like I said, it's not easy. Either way you slice it, it doesn't matter about gender, it doesn't matter about what kind of marriage you're in, whether you're, you know, gay or bi or trans or any of that. I can imagine just being with a person who's been abused, period, is rough. Like, your gender and sexual orientation doesn't even matter there. It's just rough regardless. So... You know, we've got to start start giving our spouses more credit. We've got to start giving the people behind the scenes more credit. I mean, we, we know that as far as life anyway. Um, we don't give the people behind the scenes enough credit. We see the actors and we see the, the people who are on the front line, but the people who are, like, behind the curtains, we don't give them credit at all. And we've got to start doing better. You know, that goes, that goes for everyone. Everyone. Like, just pay attention. Try uplifting the person behind the scenes. Try uplifting the person who you see doing a good job with someone who's battered, like me. Um, help lift them up more, you know? Offer some aid sometimes. Don't just sit back and be like, well, that's your problem. Don't, you don't, you shouldn't do that. Offer help if you can and be there for that person because we know depression kills. Depression can be silent. You might not know that the person taking care of the battered person might be more depressed than the person with the original problem. You know what I mean? <laughs> like my husband, there are times he's more uh, depressed than me. There are those times. It's not always easy. It's not always just, well, you know, let's just heal you and it's going to be just quick and over with. No, this is a lifetime thing. It takes a toll on everybody. It takes its toll on him in many ways and that's not fair that no one is around to help him out in dealing with me. Because sometimes, you know, I'm just going to admit it, sometimes I'm like a child. As far as not knowing what to do in life and not knowing how to fix certain things in my life. I'm just sitting there feeling helpless. Like, well, I don't know how to do this because, you know, I can't do it or I don't have the means to do it. But I don't know how to pick myself up and find the means to do it. I've been in that point at that point for years and years and years and years and years. And I just made it worse by having so many children. So, again, he's, he's just been stuck trying to repair me and uplift me, and that's really hard on him. So, just make sure make sure to um, pay attention to the person who you don't really see struggling. Just because you don't see them struggling, just because they might be smiling, acting like everything's okay. That might not be the case. It's not always, they're not always okay. When they're dealing with an abused person, that shit's not easy, y'all. It does affect them too. Anybody you're around every day, they're going to affect you in some sort of way. So yes, I impacted my husband in a lot of negative ways over the years. Not on purpose, but it's, cause, it's just because I, I couldn't help it. So, you know, his failures are lumped in with my failures now. They just are. Our failures are, like, combined. And him and I both, we have to um, keep pushing together. The more we push together more our failures will kind of work themselves out and we won't have so many failures anymore but in the meantime 
is rough. This shit ain't no joke. Don't abuse anyone. Please don't abuse anyone. Whether sexually, physically, emotionally, don't abuse anyone. Don't abuse your children. Don't, you know, beat your child upside the head. Don't do, don't, please don't. If you can help it, don't do anything like that. And if you catch yourself doing something like that, please go get help. I don't care if you run out to the police station yourself. Go get help. Don't screw up another soul. We have enough damaged souls in this world. Please, I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Don't add to the problem. Aid the problem. Don't add to it. Thanks for watching. Peace.